الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه وأهل بيته ومن اتبع سنتي يجمعين فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي uh, الحمد لله uh, today we will be talking about Surah Al-Asra which is the 17th, uh, 17th chapter in Quran in the sequence of recitation but in the sequence of revelation it is the 50th chapter in which verse number 26 and 32, 33 and 57 and also from 73 to 80 are revealed in Medina as we know that this is the time where few decisions were made especially this is the first ayah which is at the, about a year and a half before the migration of Prophet from Mecca to Medina as the Asra and Miraj is mentioned and in the last uh, verses which we'll be listening from Surah uh, chapter 72 uh, verse number 72 onwards and there are a few very significant important things are discussed in this so uh, let's start with the verse number 71 Bismillah rahman rahim But whoever is too blind in this world to see the right path will be too blind in the hereafter to reach the salvation and much more astray from the path. O Prophet, surely they were about to lure you away from what we have revealed to you so that you forge something else against us. And in that case, they would have certainly made you a bosom friend. Had we not made you firm, it was likely that you would have inclined towards them a little bit. In that case, we would have surely made you taste the double punishment in life and a double punishment after death. Then you would not have found anyone to help you against us. And they were likely to harass you in the land so that they could expel you from there. And in that case, they will have not lived there after you, but a little. Um, verse number 71 um, to 76 we just heard and listened to about. And if we could uh, understand a little bit about it, uh, it says that... Um, Think of the day when we will call every people as we were on the verse number 70 we had discussed about it that Allah is reminding that the day of judgment when everybody will be called uh, with their book of deeds will be given to them and the one who will be given the book in the right hand so the successful people will get book in their right hand will read their book happily and will not be warned. Uh, wrong even in the measure of a fine thread. So there will be no uh, what you call injustice will be done and everybody, the one who got the book in the right hand will be the successful and happily rejoicing. And the one who will get the book from the left hand or in the back of his, uh, uh, from the back will be the one who will be the dweller of hellfire. And uh, there is a literal and there is a, a spiritual meaning. So there was a debate going among the scholars and one of the one who was literalist, uh, he said, well, you guys uh, interpret Quran in your own desire. Actually, the word has to be translated as literalist, literally. So the scholar uh, of the Ahlul Sunnah, he said, if you, that's the case, then translate this verse. Verse number 72. So it means that, so whoever is to be blind in this world will be raised in the hereafter 
as a blind person. So that was uh, the worst. And he said, if you translate literally, so it means if you are blind, because this man who asked was a half of the Quran and was a blind man, because he was a literalist. So the scholar asked him that even though you memorize Quran, but you do not understand the spirit of Quran. So you should not interpret everything literally. Some things have to be translated in the context of situation. So this is how uh, some scholar says that if that means uh, the blind people will be raised blind in the hereafter, even though the Quran says those who are blind means blind of faith, or blind of his spiritual and, his, and the believe in Allah and his messenger. So this is what was the context of reference. This is a very beautiful verse to understand that not all the time everything has to be taken as a literal word and there is a context of reference. The next verse, word number 73 and 74, it is a situation in which a, a group or, or delegate from Banu Saqif, uh, that was a tribe, uh, which came to Prophet, and they said, we will believe in Islam, or we'll take bayah on your hand, but we have three conditions. And what was those conditions? Uh, one of the conditions was that we will not prostrate and do the uh, bowing down during the, in the prayer. They thought it was an insult to them. Uh, the, then the next condition they put is that uh, we will not uh, anymore worship our idols, but if once a year we will use uh, to we will take their benefit from what they give up to their idols. The people come and give the gift, so we will ho save them because they used to have as a source of revenue or income. So they didn't want to lose it. That people who are devoted to these idols, that uh, let them be there, and we will receive uh, the benefit or the people when they give the money to these. Uh, deities. The third condition was that we will not uh, destroy or break our idols by our own hands. Uh, so Prophet ﷺ did not accept any of these conditions. He said you have to perform five times prayer and you have to uh, break these idols because there is no God but one Allah and Allah has no image. Anybody who believes in image of Allah or makes image of Allah is actually a biggest of the shirk. And the third thing is that you cannot earn anything or make benefit or take benefit out of these idols. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually in a way praising Prophet that you didn't accept their terms. Yet Allah is saying that you, because you are so eager to have people become Muslim, that you are going to compromise on the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command and have it happen. Or if it had happened like this, you would have been doubly punished because you are my messenger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, وَإِن كَادُوا لَا يَفْتِنُونَكَ عَنِ الَّذِينَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ لِتَفْتَرِيَ عَلَيْنَا غَيْرَهُ وَإِذَنْ لَتَخُذُوكَ خَلِيلًا So if لَتَخُذُوكَ خَلِيلًا So they would have made you a bosom buddy had you accepted their these terms and condition. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, had we not made you firm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave his strength and believe conviction to everybody. And had he not given you this, you would have little bit softer towards them had if and if you had you done so we would have punished you doubly in this world and the hereafter because Allah is Almighty Prophet is a messenger of God Allah is the ultimate authority and uh, creator and the one who makes all the decision so uh, this is something to be understood and uh, in this verse number 76 uh, they become very much uh, frustrated with Prophet Sallallahu message and teaching and preaching. So what they did is they decided to bring him and remove him from Mecca. He wanted, they wanted to exile Prophet in Mecca or from Mecca. So uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is referring to this in Surah uh, chapter, uh, verse number 76 that, and they were likely to harass you and in the land so that you could be expelled. And you, we know that these, these are the times when uh, Meccans are becoming very aggressive and harsh and very much kind of uh, aggression and, and uh, making hard life for the Muslim and particularly for the Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. And those who are poor and destitute, those believers, they were used to regularly being tortured and punished. So this is one of the reference to that, uh, that uh, situation. Had they removed Prophet as they did in the time of other Prophets, that they threaten them that they will expel or they will exile them as Prophet Musa and Isa al Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent punishment upon those nations and they were destroyed. So it is very important to understand that when a messenger of God comes in and people who remove uh, those people from the place, they, are, uh, they get the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, let's listen to the next verse.
Such has been our way with the messengers we sent before you, and you will find no change in our way. O Prophet, establish Salah between the decline of the sun and the darkness of the night, and establish the recital at dawn. Surely, the recital at dawn is well attended. And during the night, wake up for Salah of Tahajjud, an additional prayer for you. It is very likely that your Lord will place you at praised station. Verse number uh, 77, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that had the Meccans expelled or exiled Prophet from Mecca, they would have been destroyed. And because Prophet won back the Mecca and made the dua for the Mecca, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not destroy it and most of the Meccans become Muslim. And this is today they are. So this is why they were saved, otherwise they would have been um, uh, annihilated from the world. And that's what Allah had done to the nations before that. In the verse number 78, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about what the gift Allah gave to Prophet Muhammad in the first verse when he went to the Mi'raj. And this is mentioned that, um, So, O Prophet, establish prayer. People say, where in the Quran it says prayer? It is Surah Al-Asra, verse number 78, where it is five times prayer is mentioned. And this is what it is, Salat between the decline of the sun and the darkness of the night. So declining of the sun is from Zohar, Asr, Maghrib, because after the after the uh, 12 noon, the sun starts declining. So this is Zohar, Asr, and Maghrib and Isha is done after the sunset. So these... Uh, this is what is the, uh, the night uh, salah is. So uh, sun and the darkness of the night and establish recital in the dawn. And the Fajr salah is that time. So Fajr salah is read as recited alone. So in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, surely the recital at dawn is well attended. It means this is the best time to read the Quran and Allah has his blessing. Accordingly, the change of shift of angel happened between Fajr and Asr. Those who come in the Fajr, they come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah ask them where they were and what they were doing and how they find my slaves. They say, oh our Lord, when we arrived in the Asr and when we left in the Fajr, your slave was in the prayer. And when the Zohar, uh, Fajr, uh, uh, the angel who come from the Fajr till the Asr, and when they are asked, so Allah, they return to Allah, and Allah ask them what you, how you found my slave. They say, oh, our Lord, when we arrived in the Fajr, your slave was worshipping, and when we left in the Asr, they were still praying. So Fajr to Asr and Asr to Fajr. These are the uh, division of the timing of the angels who bring the information. Accordingly, there are 22 angels guarding our nose, our eyes, our ears, our mouth, our body, our right hand, your left hand, and there are um, um, what you call Apollo uh, Nafsin Alayha Hafiz. There is another guardian angel with us. So these are the number of angels which protect us from all these bad, bad things coming to us. And then this is the dua which Prophet Sallallahu was given when he was entering Medina. And this is the dua which is also now many scholars say if you have diabetes, you should pray this dua. It will help to cure the diabetes. Which means, that when, uh, whenever you enter a city, make this dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the people of the city kind and uh, soften towards you, and your visit will be successful. And uh, وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا And during the night, wake up for Salah of Tahajjud, an additional prayer for you. It is very likely that your Lord will place you at praised station. Tahajjud Salah. Tahajjud Salah, there are multiple hadiths and reference about it. According to the common uh, scholarship interpretation that Tahajjud Salah is the late night Salah, which is uh, start after the Isha and uh, before the Fajr Salah, which is a dawn breaking. And it could be from 8 to 12 uh, uh, rakahs, means uh, 2 and 2 and 2, so 6 times or 4 times. Prophet used to read long surahs in there. Allah had made it fard upon Prophet for his Ummah, it is optional. 
We are not required to do it, but if we do it, there is an enormous reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And this is the time when people are resting and sleeping. Uh, Prophet and Muslims stay up and recite and pray. And it is said by a scholar, if one person in a town or city or community does the Tahajj Salah, the entire community get blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this could be pr prayed uh, even up to the time of uh, Fajr. According to one of the hadiths, there is a narration that uh, some people say, Oh Prophet, we work in the night shift and we are very tired in the morning and we don't have time to make this Tahajjud Salah. So can we make it another time? So Prophet says, yes, you can make it after this Fajr Salah. So this is somehow, it has been said, but the common wisdom and scholarly understanding is that it is to be recited before the Fajr Salah. And it could be two raka, four rakas. Prophet used to recite eight and uh, 12 rakat, which is often people mix up with the Tahajjud Salah or the Taraweeh Salah. Taraweeh Salah is not according to um, according to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. It is not the same as Tahajjud Salah. Tahajjud Salah is different. So let's listen to the next verse. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ عَسَىٰ أَن يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا And during the night, wake up for Salah of Tahaj Jut, an additional prayer for you. It is very likely that your Lord will place you at praised station. وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَدْخِلْنِي مُدْخَلَ صِدْقٍ وَأَخْرِجْنِي مُخْرَجَ صِدْقٍ وَجَعَلْنِي مِنْ لَدُونَ and say, O oh my Lord, make me enter a rightful entrance and make me exit a rightful exit, and grant me from your own power, favored by you. And say, Truth has come and falsehood has vanished. Falsehood is surely bound to vanish. We reveal the Quran, which is cure and mercy for the believers, and it adds nothing to the unjust but loss. Um, as I mentioned that uh, verse 80, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this ayah to Prophet when he immigrated to Medina. So anytime when we immigrate or when we travel, we visit any city, we should recite this dua and we will be protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the verse number 81 in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُلْ and say, O Muhammad, جَاءَ الْحَقْ The truth have come, وَزَحَقَ الْبَاطِلْ And uh, falsehood have vanished, and falsehood is surely bound to vanish. This is the ayah which was revealed according to the Shan and Nuzul when Prophet uh, opened Mecca and he was entering, uh, as he entered the Kaaba, he touched with the staff all the idols which was there, 360 idols were in the Kaaba. Each one of them Prophet touched and dropped down. And when they fall down, even though they were sitting with the rods and uh, they were grounded and founded, and when Prophet touched with the staff, as he touched it, they all fell down. So this is was the reveal that the truth have arrived, the falsehood have vanished. Falsehood is surely bound to vanish, which is the idol worshipping. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Quran, this Quran has a revelation which is a cure and mercy for the believers, and it adds nothing but the unjust and loss for the Wala Yazidu Dalimina Illa Khasara, those who are transgressor, for them there's nothing but a loss. In other words, when we hear the Quran as a believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a mercy upon us and he uh, gave a cure. So this is why it has been ruqya, which is when you have some kind of problem or some illnesses, you can recite Surah Fatiha, we can recite the Surah Nasr for the uh, healing and cure. So there are uh, Surah Ikhlas and Nas. Uh, all these surahs, they have multiple uh, uh, healing property and quality in them because these are the word of Allah. So when we do it, we, as a believer, our iman become more and we trust in Allah and we get healed from our illnesses and we follow the Quran. We will have shafa in the sense people when they eat and drink and sleep according to the Quranic revelation or command of Prophet and Allah that we should have a one third meal, one third uh, empty stomach, one third water to be in it and only eat when we are hungry, not just to stuff and 
be active and do this walk in strides. Um, also avoid eating late night and also not to eat for longer hours. Fasting in the month of Ramadan and three days in, in the middle of the month or in the Yom Ashura or uh, on the Yom Arafah next day to it. So all these different fasting are for the healing. For the curing of the body as we know autophagy has helped the mankind for the cure so every month when we do three fast that is going to be good body to be adjusted from all the toxin and it we know autophagy is basically releasing the or, or killing the dead and the weak and and precancerous or abnormal tissues by our own body and utilize them so there is a process in it which is shafa healing and cure for the mankind from a spiritual aspect from physical aspect and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when we bestow next ayah let's listen to the verse number 83 and then we will understand the verses of it